Dames en heren, een applaus graag voor Ines Shevchenko en de regisseur Kitty Green. Ja, hij doet het. Goedenavond. Ik heb nu ook geluid, dus fijn. Good evening, Ina. Good evening, Kitty. Welcome to Amsterdam for an extend, extensive Q&A. 30 minutes we'll talk with you. For you, Ina, the last scenes in the film, we see you in a taxi driving out of the Ukraine. Um, you didn't really go at that point to Paris. You, you came back to, to, to cut across. <laughs> what happened? Can you tell me shortly what you did there for the people who didn't see the video clip on YouTube? What happened after the film? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Kitty, she stopped um, shooting a um, little bit more than one year. And uh, she stopped in that uh, special moment, let's say, for history of our movement and uh, the moment of reborning of famine, of famine transforming to an international movement. And um, this, this transformation started um, right after I left Ukraine and um, I brought, I moved, let's say, headquarters of famine to Paris, to France, where it's located right now. And um, during um, this year, um, during last year, we opened 10 more branches. Uh, now we are represented uh, by women all over Europe. And not only, we have also branches in um, Canada. Uh, and right now we're about to open the new one in Mexico. So the movement is growing. You also the have movement a branch is here developing in without yeah. men. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote a letter in The Guardian in which you broke, uh, in which you said that Victor is no longer part of your movement, huh? Yes. Um, this Do you still have contact with him? Me personally, I don't have any contact with him. Um, I, yesterday, some people, they asked they ask me where he is. I said, I don't really care <laughs> where he is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but other girls who are in Fabian, one of your... Uh, one of the other activists, do they have contact with him or is he... Well, um, uh, you know, uh, he si si from the beginning he was a friend of um, some of members, of uh, family Ukrainian members, and uh, uh, at some point uh, they, um, they broke and they didn't talk and now maybe they start to talk again, but mm. uh, the movement is so far from him and um, even if he would like to come back, he cannot because the movement is not there anymore. Did you like the film? I mean, did you like the way Kitty portrayed your movement? Well, I revealed that, that that Victor was there as well. Um, I, uh, in general, you know, the the thing is that for me, uh, that film, for me personally, it was maybe one of the ways to make something that you were just thinking that it's not possible to make it real, mm -hmm. to get this kind of independence and to break that, to destroy that guy and his domination. Um, but uh, I also wish uh, we could, maybe some people could see more about feminine activity in the film. And yeah. maybe a little bit more of us resisting. But Kitty, she didn't have possibility to shoot those scenes. Uh, but uh, I don't want, um, well, maybe some of you would think so. But anyway, I will say my opinion. So <laughs> some of you will hear some, no? <laughs> um, uh, it was, it was, you know, it was kind of. Sometimes people are asking me, but how did you let him do that? What, like, it's not logical. It's paradox. You were feminist and you let him do that. To make clear that it was not like we opened the door and we say, "Come, domination, come, patriarchy." You know, <laughs> we want you. Come. It was not that, of course. Uh, the demand of that guy and the the ambitions of that guy. They were growing. And from the beginning, he was one of uh, one of many supporters um, who were advising us, who were giving us different tips, like photographers, journalists, and he was one of them as well. Uh, then he was, you know, he was first being around, then he was advising, then he was demanding, and then he was dominating. And at that moment, when he he really he his ambitions and he started to take too much place. We, let's be honest, to be honest, we definitely, we were looking in the eyes of each other and we, we were like, but how could it happen, you know? Yeah. And what to do with that? Yeah. And uh, because again, it's not written in feminist theory uh, books, how to fight the guy practically at home or in office who is coming and trying to scream at you, you know? It's not written there. <laughs> so we had but to but find uh, the way by ourselves and we did. Yeah, uh, one more thing about Victor, I mean, he was himself beaten up severely. There are pictures on the internet with him with a bottom hat like he had a melon. Yeah. 
uh, Melonhead, um, um, and he also took refuge in, in Europe, uh, f uh, first, first in, in th Germany he's and in Switzerland, Switzerland, I think. I think. Yeah, he's now in yeah, Switzerland. In Switzerland. <laughs> Kitty, let me turn to you. Um, how come did you decide to make this film? Uh, my I'm Australian, but my grandmother's Ukrainian, and I was visiting relatives, and I came across an article about famine in the newspaper. It was a photo of Sasha topless, and she had the sign saying, Ukraine is not a brothel. And I thought it was a really beautiful image. She had this sort of strength to her, but also a, na a naivety, which I thought was really intriguing. Um, so I tracked them down in Kiev, and I shot one of their protests, and I showed the vintage footage to them, and they really liked it, and they said, come, shoot the next one. So I just kind of kept shooting protests for them, and I could live really cheaply in Ukraine, so I quit my job and lived there for 14 months and just um, li literally lived with the girls. I lived with six girls in a two-bedroom apartment, and, yeah, just shot every day and got to know them. And You I speak fluently Ukrainian. Yeah, fluent, so, yeah, a different way. Did you I understand what Ukrainian. she was saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, you, since the first day she came, uh, she was speaking Ukrainian because not many people in Ukraine do speak English. It's uh, no. not you do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, but I mean, I guess a lot of journalists approached you over the uh, over your activities. Why did you choose Kitty to really follow you? Or was she the only one really uh, suggesting yeah. that? What does mean? We, we, not, we, we didn't have a possibility to have a casting, you know, into no, no, no. Which, <laughs> which one okay. can be there. I don't know. You know? I don't know. I don't and know. Uh, I yeah, mean, so, well, there were, um, you know, we are surrounded by journalists all the time. And yeah. Uh, um, we, yeah, we, we kind of live uh, being surrounded by cameras. And um, Kitty, since the beginning, she was one of good journalist who did a very good footage and we loved it and she was very professional so you know we we always wanted her to shoot some footage some some videos for us for example or something and she was always there to help and um, yeah she had her project as other journalists uh, but then of course um, for a while she was one of the journalists for us but then of course she became uh, kind of a, at some point maybe even a part of a team that is preparing uh, actions and helping. Uh, so, and yeah, and then she was living with um, activists and she became kind of person that you could talk about uh, what you feel, uh, what's, ha what's happening yeah. in the movement with camera off. And then she turned on her camera. <laughs> and she, and she also recorded all the <laughs> shouting. And were you not afraid about the image of feminine w when well, the film the came out? I mean, you know, uh, did it hurt the image of feminine? Um, well, you know, um, what I say that we, um, I think that, you know, it's not like the film came out and it was a surprise for us because you see that we are talking in front of the camera and we are commenting um, all the situation there. So I remember when Kitty came saying she wants to show um, what she saw. Uh, well, for us, of course, it was first it was kind of no. And um, then... Uh, like in my head, it was very quickly yes because it was we were so much fed up with everything and we were struggling and sometimes you know we were kind of we kicked him one time and then he was coming back and again and again and again mm. and it was kind of you had the fe feeling that you like you're helpless you know yeah. and um, the film uh, the idea of, of showing the story <coughs> publicly was for me personally it was kind of the way out you know to. Yeah. yeah, to to commit this and to 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 try at least. Yeah. So, but of course, um, when the film came out, um, there were many things written in media that are even not in the film. Uh, ev like in next second, this all the patriarchal shit came out, and everyone started to laugh and clap, saying, "Well, of course there was a man. Women could not do that." You know, and everyone felt so happy. And of course, for me personally, it was kind of hard to face it because um, because of the year that that we spent and we developed the movement um, after film yeah. was finished. And I had a feeling somehow at some point that that's too much and yeah. that's not fair. Uh, but uh, again, this is one of the reasons to continue and this is one of the reasons to say to those people who are saying feminism is not needed anymore to say that look around and look what you th what you think and how you see the reality and this is the proof that feminism is needed yeah. and that's why we keep going that's why we do it, it you left ukraine for good or at least for the 
for the foreseeable future after you cut down uh, a cross with a chainsaw. The, 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 uh, the, the film uh, went all over. It was a protest against Pussy Riot. After that, in support of uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> in support of Pussy Riot and against the Russian <laughs> and the, against the Russian government. Um, after that, you fled to to, to Paris. Uh, you were threatened severely there. Um, how is life in Paris for you now? I mean, what are you doing? Do you have an office? Do you have a house? Do you sleep in your office? Do you, what do you do? How do you get your money? Um, it looks like you know everything. <laughs> no, <laughs> we no. have office. We live there, <laughs> and uh, well. Um, when uh, I came to Paris, we had nothing except women who were supporting us and except activists who wanted to develop feminine in France and in other countries. And this is basically what we have as a movement. We don't have anything else except human resource, except people who want to do this sort of activity. And um, when I came to Paris, of course, it was at the beginning hard, but it was also at the same time very easy because women they, they knew that famine will be there and it will be strong. And so right now we have the strongest branch of famine in France, in Paris. Um, and this is headquarters. We opened the first training center uh, to encourage other women for fight. We teach activism uh, there. We teach famine style activism and we, we do a lot of trainings. We welcome women from all over the world who are coming from different countries. Um, they are going through training sessions and then they bring all the knowledge and they bring famine activism to their countries and this this way we are developing a uh, famine movement as an international movement. Recently there was an, a protest in Madrid against anti-abortion, uh, Catholic movement, anti-abortion movement. Yeah. There was a protest in Berlin uh, uh, in front of the Saudi embassy against uh, the, uh, the, the, the way women are treated in Saudi Arabia and are not allowed to drive cars. Those are two examples of the new famine, let's say. Uh, well, yes, uh, all the actions that we did during last year. During last year, we um, we improved and our strategy um, really developed very well. We attacked Putin. We came very close to him, finally. We came very close to Berlusconi and we let him uh, hear our basta Berlusconi. And by the way, today, he lost everything. So <laughs> we won. <laughs> Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, please, there. When do you switch the camera off and when do you let it roll? Finding that line and when not to cross it and when you thought, oh, I should have let it go. And building yeah. that trust in one year, how your relationship changed with them. How challenging was that? It's really tough because they become your friends and your family and it's hard to stay objective. And journalists would come and see me living there. We have Spiegel, lots of big kind of New York Times and they'd say, you're living with them, you can't do that. Like you'll get too close to them and you won't be able to tell a proper story. But I think um, what I saw going on and what I saw in the girls was they were eager to get rid of this guy and I could tell that they were wanted to tell this story. It was going to be tough, but it was a way of, I had to pitch it to them like, well, let's look at this as a way to move forward. Let's see, let's reveal this story and, and let's hopefully you can move on and grow and become a better organization because of this. So, I mean, it, it was a really, really tough sort of, I mean, I had to sit them all down and discuss this with them and make sure they're all okay with it. But I also had to spend the whole year secretly filming Victor and hoping they weren't noticing that I was secretly filming Victor. So, because I knew that really at the crux of it, that is the story. I mean, he was such a dominating figure at that time when I was there. I was there when he was at the height of his kind of crazy control and ego. His ego was over the, everywhere. Um, but so... Yeah, I mean, it is. it was tough and I, I, I gained their trust and I, I don't think, I mean, yeah, when you trust people, I think they trusted me to tell the story in the right way. I didn't want to exploit them. I didn't want to do anything that would ruin the movement. I wanted them to move forward and I, I think that, that trust goes both ways and I think that worked in the end. I mean, yeah, they've done amazing things, so it's not like I've, I've ruined the movement or anything. Any more questions? Yes, here in the front and then all the way to the back, please. Wait a second, the microphone is arriving. <laughs> now I feel more complete. Uh, 
there, there, there is a beautiful line in the film, and it's, it's sort of lost in all of the, the, the mystery of Victor, but uh, the, la the larger woman, she says at one point, uh, uh, they think they're feminists, but I think, it, I think they need some time. And I, I think that's a very beautiful, a very beautiful metaphor for, for a movement, uh, a feminist movement, and this movement in particular. I, I think that sort of sums up the experience quite, quite well. But very, it, it's sort of lost in all of the other, brouhaha. Do you know what I mean? Thanks. It's a remark. It's not a question. Do you want to comment? Is on that it? a question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It d d no, yeah. that, there's a question a, a okay. few rows up. Um, two questions. First of all, uh, Kitty, I want to know how you got Victor to agree to participate in this interview because the movie portrays him in a pretty negative light and the interview doesn't help at all. <laughs> so yeah. I wonder how you got it to that. He hasn't seen the film, by the way, and I'm, yeah. I'm terrified. <laughs> um, oh, really? And, uh, yeah, and Anna, um, to what extent yeah. did the movie kind of motivate you guys to become independent of him? Or was that a process that was already happening and the film we just discussed just that more or less. Okay, yeah, yeah okay, fine. Well, yeah, just but if it's uh, not clear, I have to yeah, repeat it. I think it's important. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Please keep it short because we're going to the end and there's some more questions. Yeah, that's, you know, definitely it was a pro, it was, this is what I said, it was a long fight from both sides. And um, of course it was, you know, it was not made for scenario film to leave Ukraine, you know, or to, to make a decision to leave and to start new movement or to reborn the movement. Do you want to go back to the Ukraine? Do you want to go back to the Ukraine and continue uh, your To Ukraine, then? yes. To Victor, no. No, no, no. But to the Ukraine, <laughs> do you want to? Because now well, you're out of you, you cannot influence. You know, I yeah, I, I had to ask for political asylum in France and I got it. So now I'm I'm based in France, but definitely it's not a big pleasure not to be able to go to your own country, yeah. and especially when you know that your sort of activity really needed there. Yeah. So um, we were making plans today with Kitty that I have to wait for a while to to f make like to fix papers and to go back to Ukraine and to become a president of the country and to change it. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Kitty. Thank you for this uh, for seeing this beautiful documentary. I was uh, wondering, Anna. Uh, did one of these people in the m in the movie came up with the name Femin? And who was it? Who invented the name Femin? Yeah, this is like question who invented Topless as well, you know? Uh, for us, it's it's really... Um, well, when I arrived uh, to the group Femin, it was already group Femin, but it was uh, it, like... It w w they were not acting yet, so it, they were not doing any sort of actions, street actions, and it was not really feminine that you know, and it was not even something about to be that, but there was already a name feminine, and um, it was an idea of Anna Huto, who is also in the film, yeah. right? Um, who, uh, she actually, this is, was her idea to start a women's movement, uh, because she had um, she had a sort of women's movement in her own native town, and she moved to Kiev, and she wanted to continue everything what she did there. But of course, the idea was just transformed in something that Anna didn't. Oh. You know, Where's didn't Anna think. now? Anna right now is uh, asking for political asylum in Switzerland. And everyone she's still part of the everyone movement. Everyone is asking for political asylum. <laughs> and she's still part of the movement. Uh, well, Anna, she's uh, she's on the level of one of the founders of the movement. Uh, she's not an active member of of the movement, uh, but she's definitely one of the founder, one of advisor, one of those who are working on the strategy. Was all together. Yeah. We're doing it. There's a question somewhere here with yeah. the microphone already. Yeah, um, I Please. think I have the microphone. Yes. Yeah. So you have. <laughs> in the um, Ina, question: Is it a conscious decision to have blonde hair like you do? Well, um, you know, I think that um, you can, if you want, objectively. You don't need to ask me, but you can just check some actions of feminine. And you can see not only blonde hair. I'm the only one blonde, by the way, in the French branch. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are lots of questions. I don't know how much more time we have. One, one last question. I'm sorry because we have to vacate this. Uh, this oh, I'm sorry. No, we can't, we can't do it anymore. Last question. Hi, Anna and Kitty. I know the movie wasn't really about this, but it's one thing that I've really thought about the past hour is what has Femin actually achieved? What is it Good doing? last question. Thank you for that. I wanted to ask it myself. Yeah. What did you achieve? 
So, you know, our movement is, I think this is like, sometimes people are saying, well, okay, you are everywhere, you are doing this, you are doing so much noise, but what are the results? And like, did you reach your goals? And here is the key that you have to get what is our mission and what are our goals. First, first of all, I will be proud to say, and this is one of the main goals uh, and main achievement of Femin, that we brought feminism in its active form to um, uh, my part of the world, to Eastern Europe, where it was never in its active form before. Me as a young Ukrainian girl, I didn't hear about feminism um, till 19 years. I was living 19 years in this world and I didn't know practically what feminism is because no one in, in that part of the world is just talking about it. It's kind of a taboo thing. And we succeed to, bri to, to, uh, to bring this ideology uh, to that part of the world. Um, in Europe, we succeed to uh, bring feminism back in the street and to make it active uh, and to make it bright and to make it trendy again for new generations. And what is actually goal of famine is uh, kind of to be an active, uh, quick opposition and to, to punish all those bastards who are appearing with the idea, uh, anti-women's idea, and uh, who, is, who are just coming out uh, trying to say something against women's rights. So famine is there kind of a uh, troop of uh, kind of um, special um, how you call uh, Spetsnaz or you know you know special forces you know? yeah special forces <laughs> of <laughs> feminism you know or something yeah if you I want that that's true uh, special forces who is coming to 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 um, act feminism and to show it and to make women's voice being heard everywhere we force the world listening women's word wi women's words and for now our mission is to make feminism active and to make women's voice being heard uh, maybe tomorrow we will move to parliament and then we will have possibility to change laws practically today we are in the street and we are working in the area of human opinion and we achieved a lot of um, we, we achieved our goal we are changing opinion of of, of people about women and about uh, women as a part of this society and influence of women in political, social or other sort of life of this world and uh, any special society, separate society. All right, Ina, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> thank you, Kitty. Thank you.